So, Frans, you're here. So you've already been announced here as the tech lead and uh, software engineer from Fairphone. You, uh, you uh, were uh, participating in the panel discussion and you're going to talk today about um, yeah, the many ways to make electronic devices more ethical and sustainable. And with that, I hand over to you the microphone. Frans. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Um, uh, you know me already now. Um, I've been introduced. Um, I'm from Fairphone. Um, we are based in Amsterdam. And uh, together with about 100 other people, I work on uh, making phones that are more sustainable, more responsible, and more ethical. And today I want to um, tell you a little bit about how we do, how we do that. And um, I used to work on uh, the Android operating system running on Fairphone 1 and Fairphone 2. Um, in the last few years, I started shifting to the backend. I now um, develop with, a, with my small team microservices that connect different data streams um, from all over our company. So before I start, I want to ask, uh, ask you, who, who knows this? Who has maybe something like that at home, a drawer or a box with uh, unused and discarded electronic devices. Yeah, yeah, we are all part of the problem. This is called e-waste, electronic waste. And it's a big part of the electronics industry. Why is that? You know, we already determined today that all of us have a smartphone in our pockets. And there is uh, 1.5 billion phones sold each year, although we all have one in our pocket already. There is by now more phones on the world than people. Also, all these phones are not used for longer than two or three years, on average 2.3 years, I think. Then they are discarded, and only 20% of those are then uh, reused or recycled. And if you consider all these th uh, three facts together, you quickly understand why e-waste is one of the biggest or maybe the biggest um, waste stream um, or grow, fastest growing waste stream in the world. And this is a problem because um, all of these phones that are produced take resources. We don't really see that. We don't re really see how precious and limited these re resources are. But a lot of stuff that is limited goes from out of the earth into these phones under sometimes inhumane working conditions. People are exploited. The, the waste then um, poisons the ground. And yes, we do recycling, um, but this is far too limited to actually meet the demand for new devices that are produced each year. Let's step back a little bit. Um, what is Fairphone? How did we start? Fairphone was started in, in 2010 as an awareness campaign, initially focusing on conflict minerals in electronic devices. And what device is better suited to, to showcase this than the smartphones that's so tangible and really in our hands. And um, what we try to do is trace the use of these conflict minerals, so actually minerals that fund war, that fund conflicts uh, in different regions of the world, and trace that through the supply chain to to the phones in our pocket. And we found out that's impossible. That's the supply chain of electronic devices is so vast, is so complex, and is so opaque that it's, it's impossible for an outsider to, to look through that. So what's the logical step to do? Become an insider. So in 2013, we, uh, we started becoming a, a smartphone manufacturer. We launched Fairphone 1, That's, uh, that was our first device, and, uh, and tried to connect the, the threat coming from the mines that we know of, that we went to, that we talked to, and the threat coming from the end consumer, the phone in our pocket, um, and, and see where these two would meet in the middle. Our mission since then has been um, showing that it's possible to act more responsibly in the, in the insurance industry. To, um, to also change the system from within, as I mentioned earlier already. To be part of it and to say, and, and to see um, how much can we do, how much is possible already today if we just try, and how much can we improve in the future. And all of that we, we, we try, we do, 
by being profitable. So actually, other companies could follow us without sacrificing their bottom line. And we do that um, with three pillars, uh, our theory of change. So we build these phones and we learn what's, what's wrong with them. We learn um, what, what goes into them now. And we use these also as storytelling devices to, to raise awareness, to show what is still wrong in the industry, what also is also still wrong with our phones. They are not perfect. They are just we're striving to make them more ethical, step by step. Second, we set an example. We, um, we create initiatives, for instance, a Fair Trade, Fair Trade Gold initiative that other companies can join. Um, or we build a phone that's more repairable by being modular. And uh, lastly, we motivate the industry by inviting them to join our, our initiatives, by showing how it's done and uh, inviting them. Yeah. We identified four approaches that, uh, for impact areas, we call them, um, that we work on. The first is fair materials, so that goes beyond mere conflict minerals. We try um, to improve the working conditions in these mines. And for instance, we, um, we created the, we were the first smartphone company to integrate fair trade gold in our, in our phones, similar to the factories. Um, we're collaborating with our partners um, in Asia mostly to improve the working conditions in, in the factories. And um, that there's a, a wide range of improvements, health and, um, and safety regulations. But also, for instance, we're the first company, the first smartphone uh, company to, um, to pay a living wage to the factory workers. The third is longevity. We want to make the phones last as long as possible. Um, that keeps them out of the out of the drawer, but also out of the landfills. And it means that we, um, we use up few of the resources um, that are so limited. And the last one is the clarity. When the, end of the, uh, when the phone actually dies at the end, we want to, it to go back into the cycle. Um, I think Mike this morning made a pretty good point about circularity. Um, and, and we do that. By, by inviting, by having a, a take back program and inviting our consumers to send it back and get a cash, uh, cash back for that. I want to focus on longevity today because this is the topic, the area of these that I know about most. And um, so to summarize quickly, it, we want to keep them as long as possible to um, exploit few of the resources um, and to, and, um, yeah, and uh, sorry, and um, and we have two uh, approaches to do that. One is the modular um, um, repairable approach. What you see here on the picture is the Fairphone Three. Um, any end consumer with just a Phillips screwdriver, standard in any toolbox, can disassemble the phone, and if necessary, replace a broken part. And the second is the long-term software support, because hardware can break, but also software can break. And this is the family of uh, phones that we, that we launched so far. The, our debut was with Fairphone 1 in 2013. We integrated um, some fair minerals um, already, and we started selling spare parts. Fairphone 2 is uh, the first um, phone that we designed ourselves, and it is the first modular phone. I have really fond memories of that, in particular also because I worked on uh, a hardware upgrade for the camera. So our model design allowed us to uh, release a new, better camera version, and the end consumer could sh have that shipped home, take the screwdriver, and replace it. And I worked on that from the kernel throughout the um, entire stack to the UX. And Fairphone 3 then marked the, the launch of our ambitions into, into the wider market. We took the lessons from Fairphone 1 and Fairphone 2, applied them to Fairphone 3, and got a, a more stable uh, and, and better suited product for the, for the mass market. And, and finally, um, Fairphone 4 is, yeah, that's the latest device. Um, and yeah, it's, it's great. <laughs> Uh, let's focus on these two aspects uh, again. So the modul modularity and, uh, and the software part. So first, modularity. Um, all phones since Fairphone 2 are modular. Um, that means that without any tools, anyone can just replace the battery. 
but the battery is one of the key parts that break most easily. They don't break, they just, you know, the phone doesn't last as long um, anymore. So it's, it comes, becomes kind of useless. You, you sit there with an empty battery and yeah, so. Oh yeah, thank you. <laughs> Great, there, there's someone showing it. <laughs> um, and if you can just, just swap out the battery, your phone immediately becomes a much longer um, life because uh, it lasts much longer again. You can properly use it as you intended to do. And then um, with all the other modules, um, we encapsulate, like with each iteration of the modularity, we identify modules uh, or components that break most easily or that might be we want to replace. And, and we turn those into components. And those you can really um, just take a screwdriver and take it out, replace it, buy on, on our web shop, um, and, and even upgrade. With Fairphone 2 and Fairphone 3, we had the, the new cameras, for instance. And that gave us, um, so that's also something I'm proud of, uh, all our modular devices have an iFixit score of 10 of 10. I don't know how familiar you are with iFixit, but they rate all, they disassemble everything, they, they break it and, and whatnot. And, uh, and we were the first uh, smartphone brand to have, um, also the only, I'm not quite sure, to have phones with 10 out of 10. Also recently, the French government launched an index um, that focuses on repairability, but also on the availability and also the price of the spare parts. And there we also got a very high rank. The, the hardware, if, if it doesn't break, if it's repairable, if it can last long, is great. It is not much use if the user decides at some point, I can't use this phone anymore, for two reasons. One might be the, it doesn't have the features that I want anymore. And many of these features are software features. So um, we can do something about it with software support. The second is um, that um, every software, every more or less complex software has bugs. I think um, all of you know that. And um, so, so does the firmware and software in our phones. And some of these are really, really critical. We, we talked about it just before. And they make the phone insecure to use. So it's crucial that um, security vulnerabilities get patched regularly. And that's, if that doesn't happen anymore, then for many users, um, the phone also becomes un, uh, unusable. And, and how does this work? We, just like with the hardware, we have a huge supply chain, complex supply chain, but the, what we rely on most is two big entities. Um, one is Google, they develop the Android operating system that we integrate. And the second is the, the chipset manufacturer, in our case Qualcomm. And Qualcomm then takes uh, um, the operating system from, from Google and integrates it with their hardware, with their firmware. And in the end, any smartphone company takes what uh, Google and Qualcomm provide them and, uh, and iterates on it with the specific changes to their hardware to their, I don't know, the display, the fingerprint sensor, the camera that they use. So do we. And uh, so we also rely on these two um, for, for software support. When they stop supporting uh, or providing security patches, for instance, then it becomes very hard for any other entity and especially very hard for a small company like Fairphone to, um, to continue updating it. So how do we, how do we tackle that? How do we um, provide software support for as long as possible. We have three stages, and each of these phones uh, goes through all of the stages. First, the early bring up. We, have an OD we work with an ODM model. ODM is the original device manufacturer, and that's our direct partner. And um, they take the source code from Qualcomm and from Google and do the initial bring up, the integration with our hardware. And for as long as Qualcomm um, still provides security patches and supports the, the platform, they are also able to, to provide support and to, to do updates. That's security patches, but that's also major Android upgra um, upgrades. At one point, Qualcomm stops providing that. And then the ODM also says, whoops, can't do anymore. And they, uh, and they stop um, offering this to us. That is when our in-house um, team steps in and we take over from there. We, we've built up some, um, yeah, quite some experience already uh, with Fairphone 2 and Fairphone 3. And, um, and with the help of the open source community, um, Lineage OS, you might uh, know, for instance, 
Um, we keep updating these phones. We keep applying the security patches. We still receive those patches to some extent from Qualcomm and to a large extent from Google. And uh, together with the open source community, we, we integrate those on the phones and we even achieve um, major version upgrades. At some point, and, and there's also um, another aspect that um, Google only provides the security patches for a limited amount of time for any Android version. So at some point, you don't get patches anymore unless you also upgrade to a major version. And that is also what we do for as long as possible. At some point, that is not possible anymore. And, um, and then the support ends. Then we still try to provide the security patches, but uh, at one point, this, um, yeah, this doesn't make sense for us anymore. And um, then the support ends. What does this bring us? Um, you might remember the slides from just before um, that showed five devices uh, that we ever produced. And this is the slide containing all the phones that still receive software support. Even the Fairphone 2 that we launched in 2015. And um, that, that might not continue for so long, um, but uh, Fairphone 3 is definitely, um, is definitely still receives updates until 2024. And for Fairphone 4, we even went one step further. We are guaranteeing at least two major um, Android upgrades and security updates until 2026, and even longer if we can manage. I and the team from Fairphone want to thank you for your attention. And uh, if you have any questions, um, please let me know. We, um, yeah, I hope that you got inspired a little bit to keep your existing phone in your pocket for as long as possible. That, after all, is the most sustainable way of, of having phones. And if, you, if not, maybe you get a fair phone. Thank you. Thank you, Franz. You're, you're still here around, right? I'm around, yes. We need to move a little in the program, so if you have any questions, please uh, look, look up for Franz. He's... Uh, He's around, ask him those questions. Thank you so much for this inspiring talk.